Gone is the time, and now he is old. End of his rhyme, soon to be told. Come will the sun, and flow will the sea. Tragedy and beauty, so the wind must blow. And leafy will I know, but he'll always be a part of me. And with me where I go. Hi, I'm Tony Rocha from growing up here in Somerset. Uh, back in 1964, there was a, a band came out from England called the Beatles, and uh, we all fell in love with them. And I decided that I was going to uh, learn to play the guitar. So I talked to some friends and some of the bu my buddies in the neighborhood, and uh, they said, "Well, I think Georgie Georgie Kitchen's got a got a guitar that he might want to sell." So we all traipsed up to Georgie's house, and and sure enough, George had a, a guitar, and she sold it to me for three bucks. <laughs> and my friend Jack Thornton, who used to used to play a little with his father, uh, taught me a few chords, and I was on my way. So, some uh, half century later, uh, here I am. <laughs> I've had the benefit of uh, of, a, of a pretty good a pretty good run with uh, with music. Uh, it's probably my first love. And uh, it's enabled me to live in not too, not, not too exotic places, but places such as Key West and Long Island and Cape Cod and uh, out Northampton, western part of Massachusetts. So it's been, it's been fun. It's been, a, it's been a pretty good run. And here I am. Uh, I'm still playing in, locally. Uh, I play at the Pottersville Pub uh, here and there. Uh, I play at White's uh, Family Restaurant, uh, the Galley Grill, uh, Bittersweet Farm Restaurant. And uh, l lately I've been doing a, a couple of things at the Valley Inn on, uh, in Portsmouth. So I stay busy a few times a month. I'm retired, and, you know, so it keeps me out of trouble. And, uh, and I write a little bit. That last song was something I wrote uh, some years ago. Uh, and it's, it was about, uh, I can't say it was about, I had two grandfathers, and I didn't really, I didn't really uh, write it specific, specifically about either one, even though some of those things uh, I did with one of my grandfathers. I never went fishing with, <laughs> with either of them. So uh, I make stuff up. My wife, I'll write a song, and my wife will say, so what's that about? Who's that about? And I'll say, it's not about anything. I just I make stuff up. You know? <laughs> That's what I do. So, I mean, sometimes they're personal, something, but... Uh, I saw an interview with Graham Nash not long ago, and he he said everything he writes is you know based on personal experience, and that's not what I do. I mean, sometimes they are, sometimes it is, sometimes it's uh, sometimes it's not. Most of the time, it's not. It's just you know something pops into your head, and you and you take it and run with it. Yeah, well, I started off with that three dollar guitar and uh, graduated to you know something a little a little better. But music really wasn't on the uh, on the radar until. I was uh, in my early 20s, uh, maybe closer to mid-20s, and I was supposed to go to law school, and I decided to, uh, uh, what do I really want to do? So I got into the game a little late. I was, I was uh, probably 24 when I decided that I was going <laughs> to be a musician. <laughs> it was the 70s, you know? <laughs> it was a time of experimentation or whatever. So uh, I took it and, and uh, took a few years to get going, but finally... Played, played in a band or a, a group or two. I got a call from a from a friend of mine, a, a, a late friend of mine, Morgan Biestoff. He uh, he played in a band that eventually became uh, uh, Arlo Guthrie's backup band, Shenandoah. But anyway, he called me and said, uh, "You wanna you wanna get a little group together?" So I said, "Sure." So that was he he got me into the business, and we started out and played for a few years, banged around, and played in a band or two, and. Got out of it a little bit and moved down to Key West as a bartender, and and I decided to start doing solo stuff. And uh, 
Uh, I'd never done solo stuff. It was a little scary at first, by, all by myself. And, uh, but I worked down there for a couple of years, and, uh, and uh, it, was a, it was a great experience. <laughs> it's a great place. Probably still is. And uh, then moved back up here and uh, settled down, got married, and I've been in the, the area since, uh, back in the area since 87, and, uh, and here I am. So uh, I'm going to do a song. This is actually, it's funny, you know, talking about inspiration or what ideas you got. Back in 86, when the Red Sox lost the World Series, it was heartbreaking because they should have won. But uh, I remember I had a... I, I always remembered uh, Wade Boggs sitting on the bench with a towel over his face and his, and his, and his hands, uh, his face in his hands and uh, crying that they had lost. So it inspired this song. I mean, it's got nothing to do with baseball. It just got to do with, uh, I guess, moving, moving beyond your, 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 uh, your trials, the, the trials and tribulations of life. So it's called Father to the Rise. Father to the rise. 
Uh, this song, a good friend of mine, Robert Perry, likes this song. He has me play it all the time. This is this was, uh, <laughs> you know, the things pop into your head and, and give you ideas uh, for to write songs. And uh, I don't know, I must have done something stupid. I I messed up like so many other times. <laughs> and and uh, and I said to myself, well, you know, it seemed like a good idea at the time. And then I thought about it, and and most of the things we do. <laughs> Seem like a good idea. I mean, we don't hit ourselves in the head with a hammer, so <laughs> most of the things we do seem like a good idea at the time. So I decided to write a song about it, so here we go. I remember being 12 years old, too dumb to be afeard. Stole a ride one summer's night an old man grazed John Deere Well, my daddy wasn't happy And he took me to the shed When he asked me why I told him The first thing in my head Well, daddy, it seemed like a good idea At the time Now I see it's clear to me Should have changed my mind Well, your eyesight's 20 and 20 When you're looking back behind well, it seemed like a good idea at the time I remember being married to a sweet young southern belle But the grass was always greener and the boughs just went to hell Well, my wife, she wasn't happy and before she threw me out She asked me why I ran around and the words jumped out my mouth Well, darling, it seemed like a good idea at the time but now I see it's clear to me Should have changed my mind Well, your eyesight's 20 and 20 When you're looking back behind But it seemed like a good idea at the time I remember being too damn drunk In a bar in River Falls I accidentally killed a man In a brawl I can't recall Well, the judge, he wasn't happy and before the gavel fell He asked me why I hit that man As far as I could tell Well, Your Honor, it seemed like a good idea At the time Now I see it's clear to me Should have changed my mind Well, your eyesight's 20-20 When you're looking back behind But it seemed like a good idea At the time I remember being buried in the prison cemetery Nothing very fancy, just the preacher and the dirt and me Well, the good Lord wasn't happy and before he sent me on my way He asked me why I did all those things And all I had to say Well, Lord, they all seemed like a good idea at the time but now I see it's clear to me Should have changed my mind Well, your eyesight's 20 and 20 When you're looking back behind But it seemed like a good idea at the time They all seem like good ideas But they weren't such good ideas Yeah, but they all seem like a good idea At the time For you, Robert. So this song, uh, this is my bar closing song. <laughs> Everybody's got to have one, so this is mine. Uh, in a band some years ago, back in the 90s, and uh, we were rehearsing one night, and somebody came in and said, have you heard that new song, Closing Time? Uh, you know, really good song. I said, oh, so me being, the, you know, fancy myself a, well, I think I'm funny. My wife doesn't, but I think I'm funny. <laughs> So, um, I started just goofing around. It's closing time. It's closing, you know, just screwing around. So, but I kind of liked what I did. So I went home and, and I'd never heard the song. And, and, I, and I just, I, I, just, I wrote, I wrote the song about closing the bar. And uh, I finally heard the song uh, of closing time from Super Son or whatever the group is. And uh, it's a really good song. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> But I like mine too, so. Well, 
Well, I've been here all night. I'm a feeling just about all right. Not too high, not too low. Somewhere in the middle. It's about half past last call. Barkeep says, "Drink up, folks. That's all." No tell, motel. That's all she wrote. And you gotta go, cause. It's about that time. One more time, and I spent my last dime on this cheap glass of wine. But I'll raise a toast to the bartender. Drink it up and find my way home. Well, I've made an art form. Ah, to keep in a bar stool seat warm, and conversation is my forte. I got a lot to say, and I'm well versed in topics such as politics, sports, and chicks. And if you let me, I'll set you straight. But it's getting late 'cause it's about that time. One more time, and I spent my last dime on this cheap glass of wine. But I'll raise a toast to the bartender. Drink it up and find my way home. Well, hey, what do you say, Joe? Sure, you can't give us just one more. Round the drinks before you close. No, I don't suppose you can. Well then, how's about a pen and a bar nap for my new friend to write down the number of her telephone? Sure, I can't just take you home, darling, 'cause it's about that time. One more time, and I. Spent my last dime on this cheap glass of wine, but I'll raise a toast to the bartender. Drink it up and find my way home. It's about that time. Oh yes, it is. One more time, and I spent my last dime on this cheap glass of wine. But I'll raise a toast to the bartender. Drink it up and find my way home. Thank you.